Good day, IB grade 12 learners, and welcome to 2025 as we tackle and have our first look in this video at the pet for this year. So welcome back. This is our first look at the document. It was released yesterday on the 6th of Feb. So let's see what is different, um, perhaps in this year's pet compared to last year. Right, so we have the normal things that we see in our document. Um, we've got our introduction just talking about the pet, the purpose of the pet. So the first thing that stands out for me again, and these are things we remind you of each year, the pet forms 25% of the overall grade 12 assessment. Okay, so that's 100 marks that you're talking about that ends up um, being part of what appears on your report when you pass grade 12. Okay, so it is a huge chunk. This is this is nothing to yeah, laugh at or throw by the wayside. No, 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 we want those marks. And here they tell us the skills required. That's everything we've done from grade 10 through to grade 12. So all the skills that we've acquired, we are now going to demonstrate them in the pet okay now they just give us a little bit of uh, extra info around what a pet is it incorporates a scenario it must be a process that includes planning a solution proposal etc please do take a little bit of time and read through your pet okay now let's see what the pet is composed of they tell us here that the pet has two distinct components there is a research and information processing component. That's usually phase one, task one, and phase one, task two. This is where they tell us you're going to you know, apply your skills for sourcing, accessing, retrieving information, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And then you are going to be presenting um, whatever you found as well, you know, creating word processing uh, documents, reports, spreadsheets, database, presentations, etc. But that is more on phase two. So they should have a table here, but we'll see as we go along. Um, there they just talk about the word processing, the review and monitoring. Now, please bear in mind, while I am sharing all of this in this video, you need to go back to your teachers. You need to be chatting with them. They will assist you and guide you in class as well, or at least they should be doing that. Um, and I will assist where I can with these videos, and please, if you need anything, do reach out. All right, they talk about referencing as well. That is going to be important. You must be able to reference all the information that you get, and then we'll go through the assessment tools as well. So this is what I was looking for. This is how the, the two phases are assessed. Task one, so you, could, you see here you've got phase one and phase two. But each of these phases has two tasks, okay? So we've got phase one, task one, phase one, task two, phase two, task one, and phase two, task two. Phase one, there's a total of 70, 70 marks up for grabs, and there's another 100 marks up for grabs. So what you are seeing here is that your pet is out of 170, and that then gets converted to... Um, the mark out of a hundred. Okay. Now they do give you suggested time that should be spent on each phase. And ideally, if you work according to this, it should take you around 10 weeks to complete your pet. Now that does not mean it must be done within 10 weeks. It doesn't mean it must be done within five weeks or that you need to chat with um, your teachers about. I will say this, however, moderation for us as teachers um, with regards to the pet, usually takes place in the first week of August or somewhere around there. So I usually tell my learners, you need to be done with your pets, like the entire pet. You need to be done by the end of July. So I usually say, look, the June holidays, when you come back from the June holidays, that first week or two, that's when you should be officially done with the pet. That means I've had a look at it, I've suggested some changes, I've marked it, I'm happy with my marks, I've double-checked everything, and then August it can go away for moderation. 
Okay, so you'll have to chat in your individual classes with your teachers as to what that deadline should be. And I mean, there they say, right? The learners must be provided with deadline dates in accordance with your school term, because some schools are different. So the final PET submission will consist of the following. Phase one, that's the two tasks involved in phase one. And then I want to explain this a little bit. Phase two. Now in phase two, you're going to be using Word to do your report. Like that is, that's, there is no question about that. You are going to do that. The other um, packages you have a choice around. So they mention here, you need to work with at least two of the following three packages. Spreadsheets, database, and your third package, which will either be a presentation, a website, move your video. It's not all of these, it's one of these. So what then happens is you submit in your pet a spreadsheet, a database, and a presentation. What the rubric will do, and here is the rubric, and I'm just showing you the end over here, so we can see there's phase one, your marks go in there, and you can see there are tabs here with the rubric for everything, and as we mark this, it then comes through over here to our summary sheet. So, here you can see, let's say I have done well in Word, and I get all my marks in Word, and sorry, and I pop that in there, I get the 25 marks, there we go, I get my 25, that goes to my total. Now, I've got my spreadsheets, database, so let's say I get 22, oh sorry, let's go 22 marks for my spreadsheet, I get 15 marks for my database, and I do a presentation and I get like 25 out of 25, like I'm great with presentations. <laughs> okay, so I get my full marks. Do you, do you see what's happening here? 22 plus 15 plus 25 does not equal 47. It takes the top two marks out of the three packages, and that's the mark out of 50. So in this case, with regard to the spreadsheet, the database, and the PowerPoint, which are the two that got the highest marks? The presentation and the spreadsheet 22 sorry 22 plus 25 equals 47 okay so even if you don't do that well in database push your effort into the others your spreadsheet and presentation and you can still end up getting very good marks for that right and we'll talk about the rubric in another video but i just wanted to show you that and explain that okay so there is going to be a lot of planning that needs to be done. And they just mentioned here, and this is probably the most tricky bit out of the lot. The learner may select their own topic with the approval of the educator. So immediately, you must understand that you can choose a topic of your choice, but you need to check that with your teacher. Your teacher needs to make sure that you are on the right track with that topic and that the topic is actually researchable. They do mention here, yeah, they've given us a few examples. They tell you that these three topics, topic one, topic two, and topic three, may be used. Okay, so you can use that. They also mention subtopics within the overall exemplars may be chosen. The only thing you need to take note of here is that learners may not choose a topic that has been previously undertaken at their school within the past two years. Now, who's going to know that? Only your teacher. Right, so you need to be in constant communication with your teacher, making sure you've chosen the right topic, you are on track, you're doing the right thing, etc. You can do it! Then topic number one. Remember, they've given us three examples. So the examples they've given us, topic number one is climate change. Is it the biggest threat facing humanity? And then they tell us here that your task is to investigate the causes, effects, and strategies that can be taken to reduce the vulnerability of societies and ecosystems to the impact of climate change from a local or global perspective. So if you're taking this, you're going to be investigating all of this from either a local or a global perspective. Topic number two deals with smart wearable technologies. 
and they just tell us here that your task is going to be to explore and pinpoint specific applications where smart wearable technologies are currently effective or have potential effectiveness including the challenges and considerations involved and then topic number three a community in uh, event and they uh, they tell us that your task is to plan and organize a community event with the purpose of celebrating diversity and promoting inclusivity right so there are our three topics you can use them you don't have to use them you can come up with your own topic um, it is entirely up to you but you just need to check that with your teacher okay so let's go further through this document because this is the first time we're having a look at this um, phase one year okay obviously if there's a due date and then they give you a lot of details so phase one task one task one there needs to be a task definition and they talk a little bit about that and again i'm going to go through this in subsequent videos a key question there needs to be planning with 15 questions they tell you what type of questions you need and criteria around these 15 questions they even give you a table of what this should look like then phase one task two you now need to answer the questions and if we just look at that table from phase one task one you see here this will now be done in task two task two task two task two stop it get some help so they give you all the information around that then the planning talking about the report you need to run a spell check every time and have a screen dump in there but i'll show you some examples as well for word processing they Folks, they're telling you everything that they want from you. So just follow what they are saying. Then for phase one, the submission of evidence. So sometimes your teachers might uh, leave this electronically. They might print it out. But it's a way of checking that you have actually given everything. And it's a way for you to make sure that you have submitted and you've put together everything that needs to be submitted in the pad. Phase two, they follow exactly the same thing, telling you, the documents that need to be created, the applications, what is needed inside of that. So there they talk about the spreadsheet, talking about the database as well, and then one of the following. So folks, it's either a presentation, a movie, slash video, or a website. Not all of them. It's one of them. Always marks up for grabs with integration. So integration with the features of other applications. For example, Doing a mail merge between a document and a database or a document and a spreadsheet. Maybe there's a paste link. There's an export. Um, you export in a spreadsheet to database, etc. Or maybe, maybe you're importing something. Okay. So there are marks up for grabs with that as well. And then phase two, task two, the final presentation. There they tell you that you're going to be creating a report. And look at this. There are the headings. Title page table of contents, introduction, all of these things. So everything is there, and then they tell you com uh, complete the submission of evidence table as shown below. And there it is. Again, use this when you are submitting so that you also know that you've done what's needed to be done. Right. Then you see right at the end, it says signed declaration, appendix B of the SAGs, and signed... Um, AI declaration addendum A. Okay, in the appendix, they give you some questions here as well that you can use. There's addendum A. You can see that over there. You need to complete that. And then I'll show you in the SAGs what addendum uh, B looks like. That's the declaration to say that you've done everything, you've handed it in, um, and everything is okay. Right. So there we go, grade 12s. That is our first look at the PET, IEB PET for 2025.